whenever I start a talk like this, some of you might have heard this quote. I always I always use it, and I've used it for a number of years now, even before I started talking uh, very narrowly on AI like I do at the moment. And that is we'll experience more technological progress in the coming decade than we did in the preceding 100 years put together. Now, I used to use this, and I think I used to just think it was hyperbole. It was an exaggeration to 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 make a point that things are going to change. Technology is going to have a big impact over the next few years. But I don't think I fully understood this quote until the end of November 2022, when ChatGPT was released by OpenAI. And then playing with that for the first few times, this quote suddenly came to life. And you probably had similar moments where you start to think, wait a minute, if this technology is is integrated into this tool or to this platform or to, to this technology in my home or what, how we do things at work, then this is, this is going to blow our minds. This is going to really advance what we're doing. It's going to change how we interact with technology and it's going to change the technology we have. And then add on that the the layer of progress that, that what we've got now and what we had back in November 2022, wasn't wasn't staying still. It was moving so fast in the progress that we've had since and the progress that is predicted to happen in the next few years, then I think this quote could be absolutely true. And and I think it will be. I think we're, we're staring over the edge of a cliff at the minute and, we, and there's a lot of great things to come and a lot of challenges, I think. We're going to have to step up to the challenges that will come with it as well. But let's let's now focus down on what we're going to be talking about specifically today, because as I'm sure you will be aware, using these tools already, which I know some of you will be, is that we don't have to wait. We we know change is going to come and and some some fast progress will happen, but we don't have to wait to start getting these tools to work for us now, to utilize them. And that's what I want to focus on today. How do we pull back the layers, go back to the core of what these tools are, how we interact with these tools, and how we get the most out of them so that they can they can transform, like I said before, how we work, how we learn, and how we play as well. So ChatGPT, let's do a quick intro. What is going on here? Because, and, and I know... St- there are other tools, and I'm, I'll probably jump into Google Gemini, which is the equivalent of of ChatGPT for Google, because um, I really like it. I think it's really good. Uh, ChatGPT still tends to be considered the best, uh, the most accurate when it comes to making errors, and so on. So I tend to use this, and it started off kind of this new era that we find ourselves in. So I tend to use ChatGPT quite a bit. So if you're somebody who uses another tool, Copilot, Gemini, Claude, well, all the different ones out there. Um, just know when I'm talking about ChatGPT, I'm kind of using it as a bit of a catch-all term. But let's specifically go for ChatGPT right now. So releases 2022. Why is it so different? I mean, we've had good AI. I mean, if you've had a smartphone in your pocket, you've had really good AI for the the best part of the last 10 years. So what makes this different? Well, and I'm only going to speak in broad strokes here. So if you're really technically minded and you know kind of a lot about this, then then forgive me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk in really broad strokes. And that is a lot of the lot of the AI we've had previously has been there to give us insights into data, to learn about data and give us insights. So why is this different? Why since it was released, do you, is it in the news, in newspapers? Uh pretty much every day because this this is not the same this is generative so again in broad strokes it gives us new data or new content or new material or new media and that's where the key to the the transforming power of what we have so far with these tools is how can it do that well as i'm sure a lot of you will know we'll jump into it in a second it can understand human language and it can respond in human language too. And therefore, it can simulate a human conversation. And that's really important. And it goes to kind of what I was saying before about the about how this is it's going to change how we interact with it. We're not going to need we don't need special skills now to interact with one of the most advanced technologies there is. 
because all we need to do is talk to it in our natural language. So let's jump into this. So I'm going to just quickly come down and we're going to go over to ChatGPT. If you've never used ChatGPT before, then as you can see here, and I think you can see that, uh, as you as you can see here, it looks a bit like a WhatsApp conversation, maybe a Facebook Messenger conversation. Uh, looks very simple. Uh, in fact, Sam Altman, who is the creator of this tool, he's the CEO of, of OpenAI, uh, says that he thinks ChatGPT is awful. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the guy who created it. It's very basic. It's very basic, and you just type into it. So I'll type in hello, and it's been a bit, it's been being a bit slow this morning. Oh, it's great. So here we go. So hello, how can I assist you today? So. Straight away, not talking to a human, talking to one of the most advanced bits of technology ever created. And all I have to do is use natural human language. And that's going to be one of the things I stress today about using natural human language to get what we need out of these tools. So why don't we ask it, shall we? Considering that GSDC who are organizing this, let's ask it. Tell me about the Global Skill Development Council. Give it a couple of seconds, and there we go. So it's starting to reply to me. So it's understood what I've said. It has started to reply. And there we go. It's given some great detail. And... Judging on what I know by uh, the GSDC so far, it seems to be fairly accurate. We get a, a citation at the end there, so it's, it's taken this information from their website. Note it hasn't copied and pasted the information. It's, it's when and learned the information, and it wrote it in its own words. Um, so I'm using ChatGPT4, which is the paid version, which can go and search the internet. Um, and I think that's about 20 US dollars uh, per month um in my view well worth it I, I i sometimes think if they put randomly put the price up to a hundred dollars a month i'd probably still try to afford it um because of the impact that this has and the the extra features that you get with the paid version but the free version is still amazing still amazing and you get very very similar results when it comes to the text side of these tools but now we can ask it to be creative as well so let me type something in like um, write a poem about GSDC. And here we go. So straight away you can see it's writing in verses, poetry verses. It's, it's rhyming as well. And so it knows a lot about poetry and it's able to take the information and be creative with it and write a poem, as we can see there. And really, really quickly. Then I might type in, let's try, imagine a workshop by BSDC of people from all over the world learn about AI. Now create an image to represent this. And with the paid version of ChatGPT, it will create images as well. So as you can see here, it's, it's thinking about what this might look like. Who knows what it's going to look like? And it's going to create an image. This will be a unique image that nobody has ever seen before. It is creating it right now as we speak. And there we go. Um, yeah. The first thing that's jumped out to me and might have jumped out to you as well is, even though I asked for a global audience, it doesn't look like a very diverse group of people. And we're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to how might we, how might we combat these tools so that they are diverse in their representation of, of images and, and content as well. 
But there we go, very easy in just a few seconds to be able to do that. How can it do it? How on earth can it? Can this technology do it? Well, there's a number of factors. And again, I'm going to speak in very broad strokes for everybody. Some some of the technology is taking big leaps. One of the one part of the technology is how it makes connections between a lot of the information it has been trained on. Another big part of it is that we've just got masses of data now. If you think the internet has been hoarding information for the best part of 25 years now, and so we've just got so much information. We've got the world's wisdom on there, the world's knowledge, as well as maybe some knowledge that we might not be so proud of, but whatever it is it's pretty much on there so the using the internet and the vast amounts of information is what makes this technology um very accurate and i mean let's look at some of the numbers chat gpt 3.5 which is the free version is trained on approximately 300 billion words worth of information if because those numbers are quite difficult to grasp so Let's think of it like this. So when we read a book, we apparently we read about 100 words every 30 seconds. Okay? 100 words every 30 seconds. If we read at that rate and just kept going and going and going, didn't take a break, it would take us approximately 2,854 years to read the amount of information that the free version of ChatGPT has been trained on. If you pay that extra money and get the 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 next version, ChatGPT 4, um, then at the same rate, you'd be reading for about 7,000 years to read all of the words worth of information that it's been trained on. So it's vast amounts of data. And then it essentially works a bit like a probability machine. So um, if you've, again, if you've had a smartphone for 20 years, you will, you will have had different variations of predictive text. If you use Gmail, Gmail for the last couple of years has been trying to finish off your sentences when you're writing an email, and Outlook does it now as well. It's not too different from that technology, but it's the way it's been trained that allows it to be really accurate. Because it's essentially just predicting the next word or next half word in the sentence, and it gets very, very accurate because it can understand, in a way, what you are asking, and it can then use the information that's being trained on to make the probability of being accurate really, really, really good. That's what that's what we're dealing with here. And let's just let me just go through. I'm doing I'm setting up a bit of an introduction. We are going to jump into the practical side of it very, very soon. Because I've got some frameworks to share with you. I've got some best practices to share with you. Um but I, I want to set you up here to 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 show you what you can do. So ChatGPT and other tools like Google Gemini, and I'll quickly show you Gemini right now. This is Google Gemini here. As you can see, looks a bit like ChatGPT. It's in, it's in dark mode, but I can turn it back to, to being white, and it doesn't look too dissimilar from ChatGPT. It works very similar to ChatGPT. I type hello into it, and it will give me a response. There we go. So very, very similar, and the AIs behind it um, are not the same but they're quite close in their capability. So text in, text out, text to text, generative AI. As you witnessed with the, the chat GPT, when I asked it to create a picture, there are tools that where you can put text in and you get an image out and it creates an image. Um, and yeah, let me show you one. Have you, is anyone familiar with this image? So this image appeared in some newspapers uh, about midway last year. And it was, they put it in there as a funny story. Look, the Pope's been spotted wearing a big white puffer jacket and a funny story. Turned out it was completely fake, completely created by artificial intelligence. A tool called Mid Journey, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, and if not, um, even used Mid Journey. Now, what I mean by that is not that this software has taken a pre existing image of the Pope and photoshopped a jacket onto him. That's not what's happened here. Now, a bit like how I said how ChatGPT works out the probability of the next word or half word in the sentence. Uh, I don't know why some fireworks just ap appeared between my head there. I don't know if, you, if any, any of you saw that. Um, I think it was, did I, was it the hand gesture. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. 
But um, so <laughs> a bit like how ChatGPT works out the probability of the next word or half word in the sentence. This works by working out the probability of the color of the next pixel in the sequence as it's making up this image. And because it's so accurate, it can create photorealistic images just like this. And if you go to a tool like Midjourney, which is generally considered to be one of the most powerful ones out there, I think, you, I think it's about $8 per month. Maybe you might just want to try for one month to have a play around with it. And I've got a guide on how you can set it up and start using it, which I'll give you at the end of this session. Then you can start creating images like this really, really easily. Text to audio. Text to audio is really interesting because it's coming on in leaps and bounds. There are tools out there where you can type in the type of music, song, sounds, or voice you want to listen to, and it will create it just from typing into it. And uh, yeah, let me show you an example. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. You can brush my hair, undress me everywhere. Oh, come on, Barbie, let's go party, because I'm in a Barbie world. Okay, that was, uh, as some of you will know, Johnny Cash, famous uh, American musician. Johnny Cash singing Barbie Girl. <laughs> now, did Johnny Cash ever sing Barbie Girl? He didn't. But listening to that, I mean, it was his voice singing it perfectly. All done through artificial intelligence. If you go to YouTube and type in AI covers, cover music, you will find all sorts of weird and wonderful <laughs> uh, different types of music, um, artists singing other artists' songs. Um, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Now, text to video. If you keep, if you are uh, on the pulse of of the progress of AI, you will know about three weeks ago, OpenAI, the company who created ChatGPT, announced they're going to release uh, a tool that will allow you to create videos just by typing into them, and they've called it Sora. And this is the type of thing. This is the type of thing it creates. So this was created just by typing in um, a fly through of an art gallery. And this is what this created. Sora. And we're going to get access to this in the next few weeks, hopefully. They haven't fully released it to the public, but they've been shown examples of what it's capable of. And let me give you another example. So the, what they did was they just typed in very simple prompt, point of view footage of an ant navigating the inside of an ant, I think that says tunnel, nest. So I've got the windows from Zoom are, are covering half my screen. Um, and this is what it came up with. Completely created by AI, just by typing that prompt in. Completely unique and bespoke, be created in that moment. Now, if you, if you know anything about insects, they don't have four legs, they have six legs. So it's not 100% accurate yet, but absolutely amazing let me show you another one as they typed in a photorealistic close-up video of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside of a coffee cup and this is what it came out with as you, as you can see there the two ships on top of the coffee and the waves and the way the ships move in all created just by typing into it the type of videos they wanted to see now this led me this technology led me to write in my book in the AI era, we will create simply using words. Simply using words. Now, when I say that, it normally scares half the people in the room and excites the other half. Because if you're like me and don't have a creative bone in your body, this is amazing what you can create, what you can generate, uh, how you can express yourself. And I mean, let's even take that one step further. What about the people in our society who find it really difficult to express themselves? What about the students in our schools who have special educational needs, who, who really struggle to express what's going on inside of their heads? This technology could revolutionize life for those people. I mean, every image you you've um, saw in this presentation so far, it was created with AI. I mean, the other side of it is scary as well. Let's be honest. So what, what about all of the people who are training in these technically creative skills? And, and that's not just create the creative sectors. 
that's that i mean creativity is at the heart of most work at the heart of most industries so this is going to impact us but and i'm just going to leave it here because i don't want to just leave you over overlooking that that um that canyon <laughs> uh is that the, a lot of the evidence suggests so far that it's actually the humans and the AI together that's getting the best results. So it's the collaboration. It's the collaboration. And that leads us really nicely into jumping into some of these tools and looking at how do we get the most out of them. Um, and I want to introduce you to this prompt framework. Now, this has evolved over time. Back in December 2022, I was using ChatGPT. And like some of you have probably noticed, it wasn't amazing. I mean, once you get past the the mind-blowing, wow, that look at what it can do, look at how it's writing, suddenly you realize, actually, it's not quite relevant or it's not exactly what I need. It might be too general, for example. Um I mean, let's, I mean, let's, yeah, let's give it a try. So I'm going to go over to ChatGPT. And if I type into it, write a Facebook post to advertise the launch of my new product, let's say, and AI app that turns song lyrics. I'm just doing this off the top of my head at the minute. <laughs> An AI that, that turns song lyrics into artistic images. Press enter. So it's a free flow and thought off the top of my head, right? And this is what we get. Exciting news, friends. We're thrilled to announce the launch of our brand new app, Lyric Art. Have you ever imagined what your favourite song lyric would look like as a masterpiece? Wonder no more with Lyric Art, blah, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And there we have it. Now, if I'm just imagining if I had this type of tool, I would not be to use this. I mean, first of all, let's quickly pick it apart. Um, exciting news, friends, it might not be the way I want to start a post. I, I think I probably would want it to be a bit more engaging um, and get straight to the point, hook everybody in, make them want to read more. I think that's just a bit bland. Second line, I mean, I haven't given it the name of my company, so it's just made one up. Very important to know that, that if you don't take control of your input, it will just make it up because you're... Essentially, if you don't be specific enough, you're handing over the agency to the AI. Now, in some circumstances, that might be really useful. For example, uh, a study in America last year found that ChatGPT can be more creative than a group of humans for coming up with ideas. So you might not want to be too specific if you're using it like as a bit of a bit of a sparring partner to generate ideas. However, if you want me to do something really specific like this, you want to take control. And in fact, that led me in my book to, to name a chapter on prompting, uh, outsource the doing, not the thinking. So it's all about outsource the doing, but you still need to be the main thinker. And you being the main thinker means that you need to be the main communicator. You need to get across specifically what you need. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second, because this Facebook post is not fit for purpose. So how do we get it to be fit for purpose? So this prompt, sorry, this framework started out as the prep framework. And it involves prop role experience explicit instructions and parameters. Let me take you through that really quickly. So prompt is essentially, it's the introduction. So we're gonna create some Facebook posts about my company. Quick introduction, and you're telling the AI what you want it to do, and then you're gonna dig deeper. And then the next thing to include would be the role. And if you if you use ChatGPT, and if you've used it for a while, and similar tools, you'll know that this is quite common now to, to include roles in. And essentially, you're saying to it what you want it to become. So let's take our Facebook example. You might say to it, you are a world-renowned um, copywriter who specializes in Facebook posts and have 
um, helped businesses go from zero to $5 million revenue in 12 months, blah, 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 blah. And you can you build up that character. It doesn't have to be really detailed. It could just be a single line. But you tell it who to become. Why do you do that? Because it sounds bizarre, doesn't it? Well, one of the reasons is because it's another way to get it to focus on some key information you want it to include. Remember, the free version of ChatGPT was trained on 300 billion words worth of information. We need to try and get this thing to focus. So I think of this as a bit like a funnel and the prompt being the top of the funnel. So we introduce it. Next level, we get a bit narrower. Then we get a bit more narrow. Then we get a bit more narrow. And then by the end, hopefully we're getting it to be really, really specific and to focus on exactly what we need. And we do that by being specific in different ways. The role is one way, getting it to take on a role. The next way, the, the E in the prep method, is be explicit. Now, this is a bit of a catch-all term for tell it everything it needs to know. So for me in that Facebook post, it would be about, well, what's the name of the company? Maybe the price, maybe um, some key information about the customers. Who is the customer? What is the platform like? How do they access it? So I would want to build up a picture of the key information I want in there. At the moment, this technology can't read our minds. So we need to communicate with it well. And I'd love to, I'd love to compare this to, let's say you had an intern working for you, a really keen intern. Now, you would set them off on task. You'd want them to go and take a bit of agency and be creative and get them to go and do something. But if you ask them, let's say, to go do a Facebook post for your company that was going to go out public to your customers and potential customers, the chances are you're not going to use what they've come back with straight away. You're going to want to look at it. You're going to want to point out maybe some of the good points and then give them some advice on how to improve it. Maybe a bit, be a bit more specific on what to include because maybe the first time you weren't as specific as you, as you might have thought you were and so on. And it becomes a conversation. So being as explicit as possible is so important. Then the the, the second P in the, in the prep method, so just looking at that first prep bit, is parameters. And this is things like, what tone of voice do you want it to have? Do you want it to be familiar? Do you want it to be professional? Do you want, do you want to give it a scale of familiarity or professionalism? And so on. You can also include in there the, the reading age. Uh, interestingly, um, I, was, I learned a while ago that the Sun newspaper, which is one of the, the main tabloid newspapers in the UK, they tried to write all of their articles at a reading age of nine years old. Now, <laughs> I mean, make of that what you will, but they're definitely going for lowest common denominator here. So you, you might want to think about, well, how, if I'm if I'm reaching a broad audience, how might I want to pitch my the, the reason age of what I'm writing, and some of the format and stuff as well. You might want to say, put this information in a table, give it a heading, give it a subheading, bullet points, whatever it is. So that's the parameters. Now, let's do that. So I'm going to go back to this now, and I'm going to type into it. Just going to try and move. Got the... Zoom windows and everything all around my screen. So I'm just trying to move him out of the way so I can actually see Chat GPT. Uh, right, let's actually, no, we'll not start again. We'll go into, let me go in there and I'm going to just edit this prompt. So I'm going to go back to the top, click the pen icon, and I'm going to edit this. So now what I want to say is write a Facebook post to advertise the launch of my new product. That is going to be the first P, the prompt bit of this framework. Now I need to give it a role. So let's say, um, and, and let's we can actually get it to be a specific role if we want to. So let's say act as the famous copywriter, Gary Halbert. He's a famous copywriter. Um, act as the copyright writer, Gary Halbert. Um, take on his expertise and 
apply them to the good practice of writing promotional Facebook posts that are compelling. Okay, there we go. Uh, so I've given it a role. It's going to be Gary Halbert take on that expertise. So we've got the the prompt. We've got the role. Now we need some explicit instructions. So I might I'm going to say it right. This is for the launch of the um, song art app that turns lyrics into works of art using AI. Um, this can be accessed at songart.com. Don't even know if that exists. Uh, what more explicit instructions that might we want to give it? Um, the audience is, let's say, teenagers that are 15 years and over. Uh, what else might I want to say here? Yeah, we'll just leave that like that for now. So the parameters, um, I'm going to say keep it concise and to the point. Um, use the, what should we use? the marketing structure of Pastor, uh, which is a structure that market marketing people sometimes use. So it stands for problem. Um, agitate the problem by the solution. Mention the transformation. Um, I believe the last one is opportunities and response. And I'm right at a reading age of, let's say, 13 years old. And let's see what we get this time. Now, obviously, I'm just pulling out examples here. You're going to have very specific examples to what you do and what, what you might use this technology for. So introducing some out your lyrics, your masterpiece. Nice. I like that line. In fact, what I would probably do is, and this is where the collaboration becomes, I'll probably take away that first bit and just have your lyrics, your masterpiece, something like that. And you can see it's put it into the 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 structure by, by putting the problem, agitate, solution, um, and so on. I'm going to want to take those words out because I just want it to flow as one as one post. Um, and there we go. And it's much better response. I mean, if you look at that compared to what we had earlier, it's 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 focusing on what I wanted to focus on. And actually, the copywriting style of it, the way it's written, because I asked it to be Gary Halbert, that famous copywriter is a lot better. Now, it's not 100%, but it's so much better. Now, now we're going to go on an, a, a more advanced journey now, okay? This is a masterclass, so we're going to get to that level now. What the prep method does is it allows you to have quite a good transactional relationship with a tool like ChatGPT. And what do I mean by that? Well, it means, I mean, if you look at that prep, that prep framework, it's essentially you saying, this is what we're going to do. This is who I want you to be. This is what I want you to include. This is how I want you to do it. Do it for me. It's a very one directional way of doing things. It's transactional. You do this, give it to me. Thank you very much. Now, the way we get the most out of these tools is not through the transactional, although we might want to start there. It's actually through the conversational. And if you think about it, it makes sense because just like talking to another human being, it's actually through the conversation, it's the back and forth that we get deeper and deeper and deeper. And it allows, let's say me and you were having a conversation, 
the more we spoke, the more we would understand each other. The more we spoke and dug down into a topic and we'd understand each other's points of views and we'd kind of understand the angle we, we each other were coming from and we'd be to respond in a better way and have a more meaningful conversation. And it's the same with this. So a very transactional, I mean, it's are you going to a shop and, and order something from, from the counter? It's a transactional thing. I would like that, please, and they give it to you. You've had a conversation in a way, but it's not the most amazing interaction you'll have ever had. The way you the way you, you get get this thing to understand you is through the conversation. You can also almost call it relational. And the next three parts turn it into that. And it's it's based on evidence from a report that came out in November 2023. So I took those, took that um, latest research and extended the prep framework to the prepare framework. And the first bit is ask. So simply saying to this, and, I'll, and I'm going to go over to this example here, but simply saying to this something like, ask me some questions that will help you write a better Facebook post. Write these in concise bullet points, and I put that in because sometimes it can waffle on a bit, it can go on a bit too much, and I don't want to read paragraphs of questions, I just want some really concise questions. So press enter. I was thinking about it. Now it's going to come back to me with some precise questions in bullet points that it thinks, actually, if I had the answer to these, I would be able to make a much better Facebook post. Now, you might look at that and go, oh, I don't want to answer all of that. It's going to take a lot of time. So you, you could easily get it to, right, let's um, select the three questions that will have the most impact. So I'm getting it to focus now. Focus even further down onto those bullet points. And essentially what you're doing here is you're taking the agency of the conversation. And you're the person who's got the agency and you're sharing it with the AI. You're, you're getting it to think for itself, to reflect, to, to self-analyze its response, to evaluate its response. And that turns it into a conversation. It's not a one-way transactional deal anymore. This is a conversation. And it's give us some questions. And I might want to answer those questions. And if I answer those questions, it's going to be able to give us a more insightful, meaningful response. Now, in the same vein of that, and I'll go back to this, you've got the R, which is the rate. And now this kind of does the job of the ask, but in a much more um, deeper and in a, in a way that you can measure a bit more easily. So let me come back over. So for the rate, you might just want to type in, and this, this will apply to pretty much any prompt after, it's, after you've got your response. Rate your Facebook post on a scale of 1 to 10. Also, give me the criteria in a table of your grid. So this time I'm saying, right, you're going to do some real self-evaluation here. You're going to create a criteria to determine what a good Facebook post is going to be. And then you're going to grade your own Facebook post based on that criteria. And you can see it doing it right in front of you now in this table. And it's give itself a seven out of 10. So it's measuring our attention grabbing, the clarity of message, engagement, relevance, the pastoral framework that I asked it, creativity, call to action, adherence to brand voice, and so on. And it's give itself a 10 for most of those, uh, sorry, a seven for most of those categories, apart from the top one, which is eight. So now you have got an insight into this. And you might think to yourself, 
Well, actually, I don't I don't agree with with how the criteria should be for this. You might want to go in and change the criteria. And you would just do that by typing into it, change the clarity of message for this, and, and it'll change it. And then after that, you could type something in to say, okay, now aim for a 10 out of 10. And, and I'm going to type something in, which is a little tip. You can type things in like, um, take a pause and a deep breath and go. Now, bizarre, I know, but typing something like that in has been proven to to get better responses. Now, let's see what it comes up with. Yeah, interesting. It's made up a testimonial there. So um, for the sake of ethics, if you do something like this, you might want to jump in and change that to an actual testimonial. Okay. Now you can read that and judge, is it better? Is it not better? And you might need to change the criteria. Now let's go to the last bit, which is the E, the emotions. Now this will be bizarre because in this research paper, they found that if you appeal to its emotions, you will on average get a 10% better response. And they, this, the wording that they found worked best was, my job is in danger if this is not a good answer. So you type that in and it tries to, I think it's because it's designed to please. It's designed to want to do the best job as possible. And it's actually trained a bit like a dog's trained. It gets digital rewards when it, when it does things um, right. So you up the stakes, albeit with emotion, but if you up the stakes, it will try even better to get there and to and to meet that new standard that you've set. So I might type in, now try again, but make sure it is amazing because my job depends on this. Just some of the quirks of this technology. Now, will this always be around? Will we always interact with it like this? Who knows? But in the moment, this is one of the quirks that gets it to go a little bit further and a little bit better. And I suppose if you're in a marketing department or you're doing marketing for your own business, let's say, you you want to get the edge on whoever else is using this technology as well. So knowing how to to prompt in this way might really help. Okay. And again, this is a collaboration. So um, based on how I use this, even when I get to this point now, I'm still probably going to need to copy and paste it out to Facebook or to a Google Doc or wherever and still then go through and make some edits myself just so I know it's exactly how I want it and how I want to portray my company. So there's always that collaborative element. There's the collaborative element from you in terms of you prompting and getting more specific, maybe using the prepare framework. Then there's also the the you maybe just taking it and editing it manually at the end of that as well. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I was I was talking to I, I speak to a lot of people who are using this technology. And just to give you one example, I was talking to one of the creative uh, designers at Jaguar Land Rover, so the company who make Land Rovers. And they were saying that um, for probably about the last year and a half now, when they're designing a new car, it's probably about 80% AI and 20% human designers. And they collaborate with it. They, that 20% of the human is is kind of iterating with it. It's getting it going. And then it's also at the end of it working with it as well. So that collaboration is so, so essential. And you can do this with all sorts of things. And you might want to you might want to do get it to, let's say, let's say you've got your own company. Um you might we are going to take my let's say 
hundred thousand dollar revenue company to a five hundred thousand dollar revenue company in one year. Then you might say to it, act as a world renowned CFO. Um we sell what could we sell? I literally looked at the wall there and saw a picture. So I'm gonna put picture frames um for customers who love the color black this is really random uh, and then i might say um be concise and talk to me like i'm a child because i'm a bit worried that if it starts being a cfo it might start using lots of technical language now as you can see that i've used the prep framework um so i've, pro I've prompted it i've got it to role i've given it some explicit instructions and give it a few little parameters this is a very very basic version of it as you can see if it was actually my business i'd probably put a lot more effort into this but if i click enter it could be a nice way to start because if it's going to be conversational got to start the conversation somewhere and let's see what it comes out with So it's breaking it down into different things we can do. Sell more frames, introduce new products, better website, work with artists. So some of these things I might not have thought of. Smart spending, keep customers happy. And then, and I'm going to share this one last tip with you because we're about a minute out now from questions. But a nice way to do this as well is, is to start broad like this. So you might start with, right, just give me some general advice. Or if you work in marketing, you might say, produce a marketing plan for me for the next two weeks. Okay. And then it'll it'll give you an overview, a bit like this as an overview, and then start getting specific with it. So I might look at it and think, right, a better website. Um, tell me how I can create a better website. So delving deeper, deeper, deeper. And then I might want to come all the way back out and then delve in on another area. So it's sometimes nice to think of this as kind of a zooming out, zooming back in on different areas. And, you, and again, every time you do that, every time you zoom in, you're getting it to be a bit more specific and then you can bring in what you've learned through the prepare method to get better results out of it. So it's going to tell me, make it pretty. It's going to, all of this. And then I could even get down to the point where I, where I say to it right now, write the copy for the website suggest an image for the website. I can even get it to create the images for the websites. Zoom back out and go into another area. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I've got loads of resources uh, in a resource pack at ws.theaieducator.io if you, you scan that QR code. Um, some of them are for educators. Uh, if you've got children, again, you might want to look at that because you could work with you, your kids on that. But it's got the prepare framework in there. It's got some strategy things in there about how you might want to start strategizing for this technology and some cool prompts in there as well. And I will leave it there. Thank you very much, everyone. And <laughs>